Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. Welcome to Make and Take Tuesday. This is a little weekly series where I use a new paper product, dye, tool, technique, and we make something beautiful together. All this year in 2023, we've been making the Graphic 45 Flower Market folios for each month. And it's time for us, believe it or not, to do June. So reach into your June 8x8 and pull out your cut apart sheet and your pattern. And then do the same with your 12 by 12. And then from your patterns and solids, grab a sheet of this green botanical and a sheet of this pink botanical. I have a little scrap from another project. I'm gonna pull that out in case I need it. And then I always have to look for companion papers because there's not enough paper between those to make the folio. So I go through my stash and this time I found a Kaiser Craft collection called Mademoiselle. And this works surprisingly well with the papers. And I think it's mainly because of this sort of beigey background and the greens are a good match too. So I, if you have this in your stash, pull it out. If you don't, look for something, and the way I choose the papers to go with is I match color tones. And you can see, if you hold this here, even though this doesn't have the purple in it, it's got the same shade of green and the same sort of uh, tan. And it just, it works. I think it's going to be really beautiful together. So I have this sheet. I have this sheet of the floral which you can see the tones are about the same. If you look at the pink here and you look at the pink here, they're a pretty good match. Then I have this sheet with the clocks and the roses and the back side of this is this all over text, which is a great match. And then I have this music sheet, which actually works quite well. If you put it underneath, see it actually even picks up some of the tones. In the butterfly and the back side of this is an all over floral which we probably will not use and then i have this one sheet with gold foiling on it and um, it's blank on the back so i might use this as like a liner sheet or something and i have a few of the little stickers that are left i like this tape and these buttons these butterflies this little bit of postmark um, so probably we'll use some of those. I found this little border scrap. And then for our solid color card stock, I have Spellbinders Deep Amethyst. This is a 100 pound. And then I have from Michael's Recollections, this is their rose petals. You know how they'll do like a series of um, shades together in one collection. This is the rose petals and this is also 110 pound. And then this is just plain cream, also 110 pound. So that's kind of a basic overview of that. I also pulled from the chipboard this pretty little label. This little charm goes with this month. This little charm goes with this month and this little heart-shaped charm all goes with this month. From the die cuts, I pulled this little floral cluster and this little rose and there's this little frame. And then from the journal cards, I pulled these two so we'll find a way to mix and match those and then there's also this little banner that also goes so that's what we'll be working with you'll need some score tape you'll need a scoring tool i tend not to ink these edges because i stitch them onto my cardstock and um i'm trying to think where to tell you to start generally i cut apart both the eight by eight and the 12 by 12 cut apart sheets. And these are what we use to dress up our folios. Oh yeah, I also grabbed from that same Mademoiselle a whole bunch of their little ephemera bits. And I just pulled some that I thought might work. We may use these, we may not, it just depends. I never know quite where we're going. I have a vision, but not a plan. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how to cut up your 12 by 12. And then you'll cut the eight by eight the same way. I find that a precision trimmer is very helpful. And um, there is a way to go after these that makes it really nice to cut them up. I'm gonna leave just the tiniest bit of cream along the top of this. 
and then I'm going to come just below the bottom of that scallop and cut this nice border strip, okay? And then we're going to, let's see, we're going to come up here. Cut out our postage stamps and then I'll trim them out even further with a pair of shaped scissors that I've had for forever. Fiskars used to make all those and I have a postage stamp scissor. Then I want to line this up. I want to get just a little bit of that border on there. We're going to cut out our large image. This goes on the cover our folio and then I also trim it so that it's even I take that little bracket piece off and even it up along the top So it looks like that. Then I'm going to turn this and I'm going to trim out my calendar. I don't want the scalloped bits on it. So now I can come down here and trim out this other border. that. Then I'll trim these guys out. You can see you just keep breaking it down and breaking it down until it's where you want it to be. There's our calendar, and I, I trimmed the scallop bits off. I don't like those. But if you like them, leave them on. And then I'm going to come in. Just trim this off right here. I'm going to cut to there. And then I'm going to trim around my butterfly. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to trim around this just loosely. These make really pretty borders in the folios and they come in really handy. So and then we're going to fussy cut out our large sentiment piece here. And here's a little fussy cutting lesson very quickly. And some of you have heard me do this lot, so feel free to skip ahead. When you are fussy cutting, you think of your paper as the steering wheel and you're just driving. See how I'm directing the wheel? Just like when you direct the wheel of your car, it turns the car in the direction you want it to go. I'm holding my scissors steady and I'm turning the paper. And this way you don't get that kindergarten choppy look to your fussy cutting. I'm right-handed, so I also slightly slant my scissors to the right so that I can see where I'm going. And if you practice this, you'll find you're very, very good at fussy cutting. I was fortunate enough to grow up in an era when little girls played with paper dolls and paper dolls had to be cut out with scissors. 
and I spent hours and hours and hours learning how to cut out my paper dolls. <laughs> so little did I know how handy that skill would come in later on in life. And then the last thing I do is I have a circle punch. This is a one and a half inch scalloped circle. And I punch the June out like that. And then I just come in with my scissors and I very quickly fussy cut around this thing that looks like a wax seal. Now, if you wanted to ink your edges, I would suggest um, Dusty Concord Distress Ink. And um, that would look really good with this. Okay, so there you go. And you're gonna cut the eight by eight the same way. All right, let's go ahead and make the cover of our folio. So we have our eight by eight piece of our patterned paper. And then I've matted this on a slightly larger piece of our rose petal pink. And this is just about eight and an eighth. And then on a slightly larger piece of the cream card stock. And then I stitched all the way around this. Then we're gonna take our large rose image and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna mat it on a slightly larger piece of pink and then a slightly larger piece of purple. I like to have these deep colors on the cover because they provide the contrast you need with these very faded pastels. Otherwise, the whole thing just looks a little washed out to me. And then I also took one of our border pieces from the eight by eight and cut it in half and put half of it here and half of it here just to add a little detail and interest. The next thing we're gonna do, and you can see I tried to stitch this on there and my sewing machine said, no, thank you. So that's why there's that big ugly mess. So we're just gonna use glue to adhere it. I was trying to save time, but my sewing machine was not impressed. And we're gonna glue this down right here so that the days of the week show. And I did stitch around the edges of it on my sewing machine. And then once we have this whole thing put together, we're just gonna add our adhesive and glue it down. Just about like this, it's a little, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm centering on the right and along the top. So between here and here, and between here and here. The next thing you're gonna do is find your eight by eight love. And you're gonna adhere this in the corner so that it lines up just like this. Make sure I'm straight. Okay, I want this rose. To go right here. And it's kind of going out over the pink. Over here, I've got our little charm and I've been adding sequins to the holes where a brad or string would normally go through. And this is gonna come right up here. In fact, I want it to be right there. I think that's exactly where I want it. And again, I may come back and snug a little piece of thin foam behind there. And then I have the 
the outside edge of passion which is going to go right here like this just like this okay Yeah, let's take our flower market and do that instead. I like that a lot. Okay, so there's our cover. Very simple, very clean, but really beautiful. And the I love the way the dark purple really helps the patterned paper to pop. Bring in two of your eight and a half by 11 inch pieces of purple cardstock, and on the eight and a half inch edge of one, put quarter inch score tape. Remove the release tape, the liner, and line your other piece up over the first using oops, that score tape inner edge as a guide to help you get it down nice and straight. So now you've got this nice long panel of cardstock. Bring in your scoring tool and put this on your scoring tool and score it four. And four and three eighths. Fold on the four and three eighths inch line. And score at eight and a half. And eight and eight and three eighths. I'm just going to shift this. Okay. So fold on your scored lines. This is your pocket. It goes on the inside. And this is the front of your folio. So it looks like this, eight and a half by eight and a half, three eighth inch spine. Eight and a half by eight and a half on the inside with a pocket with a three eighth inch side. Next, you need to cut two eight and a half by eight and a quarter inch pieces of your purple card stock and score these at one half and at seven eighths inches. So basically you're going a half an inch and three eighths of an inch. Fold these so that you have a spine on the outside. Put your score tape on the inside flap. Go ahead and lay it down flat just because it's easier to work with. And line this up, center it with your center panel. So here's your top, here's your pocket. Get it lined up and centered nice and straight. And fold that flap over. So now you have a flap page here. Repeat it on the other side. Again, I'm laying this flat so that I can line it up nicely. Fold it over. So now you have a matching flap on the right. And it looks like this. Your pocket goes on the inside. Your flap
flaps go like this and now you've got like a little box. Now you need to cut two one and a quarter by three and seven eighth inch piece scraps of your purple paper and you're going to score this every quarter of an inch. So you're going to have one, two, three, four quarter inch score lines and then you're going to accordion fold it so that it looks like this. So now bring in your pocket. So I'm going to glue this down to the edge so that it's lined up with the edge. I'm going to do this on each side. I hope you can see this is such a big folio sometimes it's hard to fit into the frame but I'm just using my thumb to line this up then we're going to put adhesive on the top we're going to fold it Make sure you're straight along the bottom and make sure you're not over the flap fold on the sides and just press that down. So see now your flaps go over that. The next thing I want to do is place my magnets for my magnetic closure. So I want to come on the right, I'm going to come in about an inch and a half and in the center. Put that down. Put some score tape over it to hold it in place. And then I'm going to come in with the opposite magnet. We're going to make sure we're lined up and then we're just going to press this in place and lift and now we've got our magnets perfectly placed. And this just holds those inside pages together nice and neat. See? Friends, the next thing we're going to do is this top inside flap page. And I've taken a 12 inch by, I believe this is eight and a quarter inch. Let me just double check myself. I set this up last night before I went to bed. Eight and three eighths inch piece of this Kaiser Craft. And then I scored it on the left at three and five eighths to make a little flap page. Now this is the one, this is the gold foiled paper that is blank on the back. So I had to cover this with a little piece of the green that is also three and five eighths by eight and three eighths. I added this little border strip and then I went into my Annette Green dies and die cut this pretty doily. And we're gonna glue this down And I only put the glue on the inside edge of my doily because I don't want to glue my page shut, right? And then from the die cut ephemera, I took this beautiful rose to mimic the pink rose over here. 
I'm going to set this inside the doily. This is the large doily from Annette. And this little leaf piece broke off, so I'm just patching that in. Then from the Kaiser Craft Collection, there's this little, in the 6 by 6 pad, which I also found, there's this little All You Need Is Love. And I'm going to set this right here. And I die cut the frame from the Graphic 45 dies. A lot of you have these in your stash. They're, they can be a little bit hard to find now, but if you look, you can find them. Uh, always check like Google. You can always, and it'll show you, like if there's a place where you can get them, um, it will show you. But I, if I can, I will link to this. So I've centered my little frame. And then I'm just going to take this little key, I think, which is from the ephemera bits from the Kaiser Craft Collection. And I'm going to glue it down like this. All right. And then I just place a little adhesive under the corners. This might be a pretty place to bring in this little butterfly that I die cut also from the G45 dies. I'm just going to put it right up here on the doily. So there we go. There's that flap. Open up your flap page and we're going to do this a little differently because I don't want to disturb this gorgeous image over here. So on the small side, which you can see I've added a row of my die cut filigree using the Graphic 45 and then I put the another on top of it on the front just to kind of dress that flap up a little bit more so open up the inside and find your die cut atc envelope and i've added my little buttons to the fake buttons to the flaps we're going to put our adhesive on this bottom flap And then center this up and glue it down right here. And what this allows us to do is to flip this open and we have a little journaling spot. And I have a little journal card from the Mademoiselle collection that I'm gonna sneak into there. So that goes there and then to hold this in place because we have this wonderful clock image, I've taken these clock die cut ephemera pieces and we're gonna lay these over like this and I'm gonna take my adhesive and place it on this clock and a little bit over onto here just so it will hold that envelope securely and then I put my magnets over here and we're gonna press this over and now we've made a little magnetic closure for this so that we can flip this then flip this and open it which is really cute I think I like that that's a fun little interactive feature and I'm going to cover up these little magnets with these little tiny circles okay so we'll just cover those up I'll put a little score tape down and we'll be fine so see I just put a little score tape on top of the magnets and put these small punched um, icons over those. So this goes like this. Over here, I've got this little snippet of a border piece from Mademoiselle. I've cut this to three and a quarter inches. And this is going to go right here. We don't want this to interfere. You could possibly go another quarter of an inch. You could possibly go three and a half, but I didn't want to interfere with that. Then I took a little three and a half inch scrap of our green polka dot paper, scored half inch on the sides and bottom, trimmed out the corners and made this little pocket. And this is gonna go down here. And in the pocket, we're gonna put our large tag. I like to wait for the glue to dry because sometimes if you don't, you end up gluing your 
uh, tag into your pocket, but I think we're okay. And then over here on this side, I've got this little just a note. This is an ephemera bit from the Mademoiselle collection. take this up just a little bit and then I've got this large typewriter that I'm going to put to dress that up just a little bit and then this beautiful large postage stamp up here On our pocket, I've got this beautiful clock to kind of go with the clock theme that we have going on. And this is going to go right here on the pocket. And then I've got this other little ephemera piece that kind of picks up on the purple tone. So I want to go ahead and glue this down. Life's little moments make the best memories. So over our clock. And I think that finishes up this page. I think that does this. I still want to put a little something here, but I'm not sure what. If something will turn up and look really good on there. For right now, we're just going to leave this the way it is and move on. So you can either glue this in now. I'm going to wait and glue mine in later because I think it's easier to handle the folio without all the pages in it. So that's your choice. Now come down to your right hand flap, all right, and I want you to cut, well actually you should have a scrap that is this three and five eighths, and I want you to trim it to a height of eight and one eighth and glue this down. This is going to be our pocket folio page. And this we actually do have to go ahead and glue down to our paper. Okay. And then from your uh, flower market, I cut this piece out. This is five and a half by nine and an eighth. And I scored half inch on the sides and the bottom. And then we're gonna trim out these corners where those lines intersect. And fold this to make a nice deep pocket on our front flap page. So this is gonna glue down. I'm just checking it for size because it's easier to fix before you glue it down than it is afterwards. And this looks pretty good. I always have a hard time seeing tone on tone, so I'm just gonna slip a scrappy piece of paper in there to help me see where to place this. So I just pick, I just grab something out of my little paper scrap holder that's on my desk. So I can clearly see where the edge of this paper is. And I'm going to Glue this down. This is going to be flush with the top and the bottom, but I brought it in just a little bit on the side so we have that little purple border. You see that? I took one of my 4 by 6 journal cards and I matted it on a 4 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter piece of my pink. It's kind of a mauve, actually, or almost lavender. And then on a slightly larger piece of my purple, and I rounded the corners 
and we're going to glue this down on our pocket. This is a great journaling spot. I'm going to center it up like this. I took this ruler sticker from the Kaiser Craft sticker sheet and added it here just to kind of tie colors together and a little snippet of it here. Then also from the sticker sheet, I'm going to use these postmarks. And I always like to add just a little bit of adhesive to stickers just to make sure that they really stick because sometimes the adhesive is great and sometimes not so much. So if you add a little adhesive, you know you're going to be okay. Then also from Kaiser Craft, I took this dress mannequin and I'm going to place it right here along the edge. And from the sticker sheet, I've got, let's see, a little thimble. A little spool of thread. A little button. And actually a little trio of buttons, which all work with these colors. So let's try to layer these. There we go. Nice. I think that's good. And then from our chipboard, I took this sweet little heart charm, and this is going to act like a turning tab. So I'm going to glue this down right here. I just put some burlap string through the top. And I have one more little button that I'm going to add right here on the knot. And that's a little bit dimensional, but not too dimensional. So I think we'll be okay there. And that finishes up that page. Now we need to make the little folio to go in the pocket. Okay, I have an eight and a half by six and a quarter inch piece of my deep amethyst and I've put score tape on one end and then I've got another scrap I'm not sure I just know that this is six and a quarter tall and I'm overlapping this and I'll give you a final measurement when I get it overlapped again using that inner line as my guide so this ends up being 12 about 14, almost 14 and three quarter inches is what I'm getting. So I'm going to bring in my score tool. And I'm going to score this at six and a quarter. And I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to score it at six and a quarter. Flip it this way and do six and a quarter. Oops. And I'm going to fold it. So now we have this little six and a quarter by six and a quarter flat folio. And this will fit inside our little pocket that we just built. So, cut a six and an eighth by six and an eighth piece of your pink and mat it with a just under six by six 
piece of pattern cardstock, whatever you're working with, and glue this on the cover. Straight is always good if you can do it. Straight is the hardest thing for me. All right, there we go. And then I took a, a just under six by two inch piece of our pink botanical. And we're gonna glue that across the center. Then I found this 12 inch, this is the back of the branding strip on one of my um, Kaiser Craft papers. I'm going to put this along the top. I cut it in half at six. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. So that goes down. Then I've got our little butterfly here, and I'm going to show you my little sneaky trick. I want our 8x8 rose panel right in the center, but I want this little border to go along. Well, actually, I'm going to push it over a little bit so the butterfly shows. That was my whole idea here. So I'm going to take my scissors, and I just kind of marked this with my finger, and I'm going to come in and snip right here. I am inking this lightly just because it has that white edge. I'm going to glue this piece down right here. And again, I'm just trying to bring in all the colors. That's my goal here is to tie all these different colors together. This one's going to go right here. Now we can bring in our rose image. Glue it down right there. I've got my June circle that we cut out with the scallop punch, and this is going to go right here. And then from my Kaiser Craft, I've got this vintage lady, and I kind of liked the way she looked here, so I'm going to put her in right here. Then on the inside, we've got this little flap. We'll just take this uh, off cut of the belly band. So this is again two by just under six, just to dress up our little flap. Okay. And I cut liner sheets. So this is just for photos. Super simple. But it makes a great spot for a couple of larger photos. And I cut these to the six by six. Well, actually this is a six by six paper pad. So that made my work easy. And let me cut another little, look, I've got this right here. That's kind of perfect. This is a scrap left over from die cutting. And 
And this is a nice color too because um, it makes it easy to journal. And I may come back and dress these panels up with a little bit of my ephemera. Or I may leave them just like they are. So this is gonna slip right into this pocket like that. And that's this flap page done. Okay, we're gonna work on this left hand front flap page. And I've cut from my Kaiser Craft this seven and three eighths by eight and one eighth inch panel of our, I think I want to use the music paper. And we're going to fold this over, create a little flap. This is six inches by also eight and one eighth. And I scored a half inch flap on one side. And we're just going to overlap these. I'm going to place a little bit of adhesive on my flap, sort of toward the outside edge, so that I don't glue my flap so it doesn't ooze through. That's what I'm trying to say. There we go. Here's our magnet. We can take this score tape off now. Not the score tape, but just the release paper. And let's glue this down. And then I've got this little piece of border strip left. I believe this is cut from the 8x8. Eight and glue this down, hopefully straight. We're off by about an eighth of an inch, but what I'm gonna do is take this little floral cluster and add it right here like a turn tab. So I'm just putting a little tiny bit of adhesive on there to hold it in place. And see, now that works, and that's really pretty. So I want to dress this little flip page up a little bit more. And I took this fancy lady from the Kaiser Craft, and we're going to glue her down. right here. And then family, this little saying that says family. Our little butterfly. And then this little tag that says the story. And we're just going to glue a part of this down. And then these little thimbles. Okay. Turn this flap page. And then I took my last little piece of my flower market. This was just a scrap. It's four and a quarter by six and a half and I matted it on a slightly larger piece of purple and put this down here as a photo mat. And I left this part open so you can slip your picture back behind All right, my there. friends, that brings us to this page, which is the 
back side of our little flip that we made. I took some scraps of paper, made a couple of photo mats. This little piece is three and five eighths by five and an eighth, and I matted it on a slightly larger piece of purple, and then added this little border from the eight by eight. And then I just cut a four and a quarter by six and a quarter and added this little scrap here. So these are gonna go in this pocket, which can also hold photos. So this is a six by three and seven eighths inch piece of our patterned paper. And we're going to put our adhesive just on the sides like this. And then put this down right here. Pop our photo mats inside. I'm not pushing them all the way down because I want that glue to set up. And then I went into my ephemera bits of the Kaiser Craft. And I've got this little dress mannequin that I'm gonna put right here, leaving room for a small photo or journaling here. I have this little pair of scissors that I'm gonna put here in this corner. This little spool of ribbon right here. And then another little spool of thread right here. And then this little love banner right here. Then I found this little sentiment from the six by six pad and I dressed it up with a little bit of ephemera. And we're just gonna glue it down right here. Okay, and that finishes that page. That brings us over to this page where I've cut a seven and three eighths by eight and one eighth inch panel of our Mademoiselle paper. And this is gonna go over that other magnet. Just like that. And then I've got this pretty piece from the um, die cut and I'm just gonna put in the very corners like this my adhesive and maybe just a little bit along this back side I'm going to glue this down right here so it's centered up along the top and the sides like that and then I took a little three by three and a half inch a piece of my patterned paper, matted it on purple, and this is gonna stick in here like a little pullout. You can use that as a journaling spot or you can add a little photo or something to it. So that finishes. Oh, and then this little sewing machine along the bottom. Like this to go along with our sewing thing. And that finishes that page. This brings us to the inside of our left hand flap page and I've got this piece that I set aside of our flower market and this is six and a half by it's almost seven and three quarters and we've got this piece of our because I'm running short this is where we have to get creative so I cut a border piece with this pretty 
purple border and I want this to, I'm going to glue this back behind. My scissors are somewhere. Boy, it gets interesting when we get close to the end because everything is just helter-skelter on my desk. All right. Quick brush of ink along the edges just to cover up the raw spot where it was cut, right? So now this is going to glue down. Oops. How about this way? <laughs> Okay, that looks really good. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. I die cut our little file folder from the botanical, the pink botanical. I've got a little wee strip. And I think I want to go, let me see. Yeah, let's go with the scallop side. And let's put it right across the middle. Just like this. And wrap it around. Place our adhesive on the back. And let's put this down here at the bottom. And then in there, we're going to put our June calendar. And you can mat that if you want. You have room to do it. And then we have this postcard, another postcard. And I have this little postage stamp to go on our little border strip. Just like that. And then this little sweet little embellishment. This is preserve your memories, keep them well. For what you forget, you can never retell. That's Louisa May Alcott, who's one of my favorites. And then we also, uh, I think that's that page. I think that's the end of that page. So that can get glued in. I'll do that at the end. And what I'm going to do is take a little paper clip for mine. And I'm just going to clip these together. Because the June calendar will fall down into the bottom of the pocket otherwise. So there's that page done. brings us to our pocket page and on the face of the pocket again to help stretch my paper which is running thin I've cut a an eight and three eighths by three and three quarter inch panel of this pretty pink this will also help to make the pocket more sturdy So this is going to go down along this bottom edge. And then to cover that, I've cut a piece of our music paper that is eight and a quarter by three and five eighths. And then I want a border along the top of this, this really pretty filigree border. Oh, 
Now I've lost two pairs of scissors. Maybe it's quitting time. <laughs> All right, let's do this right here. And then like I always do, I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of adhesive on the back of this because I just don't trust it otherwise. Go. Okay. And then to dress up our pocket, I've got our little tag and pocket combo that we die cut. And I'm just going to glue the flaps back behind. This is all pre scored, so all you have to do is fold. All right. And then I made a little tag with the tag die to go inside. It makes it so pretty and glue this down on the pocket right here. And then to go in the pocket, I've got this little trio of tags. Brings in all the colors. And then I've got these little ephemera bits from the paper collection that I'm going to glue down. I actually want to slide this little ticket back behind here. And you can go ahead and put this little journal card in there too. A little spool of thread. And on the top, I've cut this eight and three eighths by five and a quarter inch piece of our border paper. I'm gonna slip this right in here this down so I can actually see what I'm doing. And then along the border, I mean not the border, but the spine, I've got these sweet little buttons. And I'll cut and glue those down. And I think that's it, guys. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add all the pages and come back and show you everything finished. All right, my friends, we need to finish up because my battery is about to die. But I have cut from my scraps a three and a quarter by five and an eighth inch piece of purple, matted it with a slightly smaller piece of our pink, and then I've cut two and three quarter inch wide panels of our, it's just, these are just scraps, right? So I've cut them all to two and three quarter inches wide. And I'm just going to layer these in here. When it's done, you won't know that these are scraps. It's going to look very, very pretty. Okay. Just turn mine 
these edges up so that they're right. Okay. This little button border scrap. And then up here, I've got a little butterfly border scrap. Now I want to take our large medallion. Put it right here. Then I'm going to take our stamp, our last stamp. This is from the 12 by 12. And I'm going to put it down right here. Then just to dress this up a little bit, I've got these itty witty scissors. I'm gonna place in right here. And this little tiny, it's like a ticket, you know, like an order ticket kind of thing. And put it right here. And that becomes our bookmark for this month. And I think that's all we need to do there. Here's our cover all glued down. It always is so amazing when you put this together. It's like, wow, that really worked. It's always a nice surprise. And then here is our inside flap page all finished up. The only thing I did here was add a little border here and here, and then this little butterfly here. But everything else is exactly the way it was. Then here's our right hand flap page with our really beautiful folio and flap that goes inside. The only thing I did here was add this little clock sticker. Then this flips out. Here I very carefully lifted my butterfly and put another one of Annette's doilies around the clock. I just thought that was really pretty. And this page opens out. Here's all this that we finished. I didn't change anything here. Here's our little pullout page here. And then flip this. Here's our pocket all dressed up with all the things. Our center pocket, I cut two five by seven photo mats and then matted them with the patterns and solids and our bookmark will also go in here. And remember you have room for lots more photos in here as well because of that accordion pocket. So that is our June flower market folio of the month, all done and dusted. I have to be honest with you, I wasn't sure about the colors this month. I really struggled with them. But I think adding this dark amethyst to the back and these pops of deep purple to uh, sort of ground all these pastel images, faded images, really, really worked. At least it worked for me. You feel free to do yours in the way that works for you. But that's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Thanks for stopping by. Go get your craft on. Bye.